gentlemen welcome to my little opinion piece review thingy of house of the dragon something that i didn't think i'd ever be saying because after the giant inferno hellfire that was the hbo season 8 finale i don't think any of us really expected to be here and if you can get over the sting of the betrayal from season 8 of uh, Dan and David's fucking monstrosity, then it's actually genuinely really fucking great to be back in Westeros for once and actually see it on the screen. As a fan of George's work, even before the HBO show and someone who's read his books like half a thousand times, I may or may not be slightly biased about being happy to see it back on TV. Because the gods know, old and new, that we're never f***ing getting the rest of the books finished, so... I, I, I have to, I, let me have this. Let me have this. Jon Snow has been bleeding out at Castle Black for 11 f***ing years. Let me have this, HBO. You will not, you, listen, you will not f*** me like you did last time. Ah, it's fine, it's fine. It, it's actually a good episode. It's fine. It's, 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 it's all f***ing sunshine and rainbows. Everything's going to be fine. <laughs> anyway, in the words of Robert Baratheon, Start the damn joust before I piss myself. And as is tradition in Westeros, we do indeed start with a tawny before the giant war and the bloodshed. Of course, it doesn't appear that Targaryen tawnies quite get the memo when it comes to the bloodshed part. You sp the bloodshed comes after the tawny, guys. Not, not during it. Where the hell is Robert Baratheon when you fucking need him? Stop this madness in the name of your... All jokes aside though, the tournament is great. With the armor designs and the heraldry being colorful and really representative of each person's like area of Westeros. But the high towers and the Corbreeze, Malister, Tyrell, even the Bolton Knight there for some reason. Even a dude in Stark armor gets completely fucking annihilated at one point in the fighting. Like Jesus Christ, man. Oh shit, which reminds me of Daemon Targaryen sweeping the leg of a horse with his lance on one of the fucking tilts. That's got to be illegal. Like, if, if that wasn't illegal, surely after this tourney, they made it illegal. In fact, I, I, I kind of feel like a lot of the laws are going to be made because of Daemon Targaryen. Like, he, he's the he's the trendsetter, so to speak. I didn't have a lot of faith in Max Smith to play this character, but he pulls it off. I did not like him in Doctor Who, but he plays Daemon Targaryen very well. I think my bronze bitch is happier for my absence. Only Vale men are said to fuck sheep instead of women. I can assure you. The sheep are prettier. I gotta give credit to those lines from the book. Like, nah, excellent. I love that, it's great. Which reminds me of a random YouTube comment I read that said how Damon and Rayna had great uncle-niece chemistry. A comment which is going to age like fine milk. KV. <laughs> oh, they got chemistry all right. <laughs> Not the kind of chemistry you thinking, but chemistry, oh yeah. No jokes aside again, it was actually really great to hear two Targaryens having a just normal conversation in High Valyrian, like it's just a normal thing that they do. And then came the only thing in the entire episode that I can nitpick as not being lore accurate, potentially. The godswood, or the weirwood, of the Red Keep is not a real weirwood. It's supposed to be a great oak. It's fake. Now either this is an oversight, or nobody cares, <laughs> which is admittedly entirely possible, or the weirwood's going to get burnt down at some point, and that's why the Red Keep doesn't have a proper weirwood later on in the books. That's my theory. I'm, I'm sticking with that. My theory is that that weirwood is going to get burnt at some point by dragon fire. Because in the books, this great oak that's masquerading as a weirwood has dragon's breath beneath it, which is a dark red flower. So my theory is that the original weirwood was burnt to ashes by dragon fire, and then they planted the oak to replace it. That's, that's my theory. Of course, more than likely, just nobody but me cares about this, <laughs> which is entirely understandable. <laughs> But speaking of wild theories, we'll address the elephant in the room. Perhaps the one most controversial thing, I actually, never mind, the second most controversial thing, since the most controversial thing would be the woke snake. And yes, that is now officially Corlys Velaryon's title, because I was harassed relentlessly for explaining that he can exist within lore and not be a white dude. This is super. Yeah, yeah, she's she's eight. 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 So I can't wait until the white daughters have mixed kids so you can clown. bitch about this in real life. Oh, you can smell the shit from five miles away. But we're not here to talk about that. I've done whole other videos about that, and they still harassed me. So, the woke snake, ladies and gentlemen. The most controversial man in Westeros, who is going to kick some ass in episode two, hopefully. 
But I digress. The second most controversial thing would be the prophecy. After the king cuts open his wife and stillborn child, and then realises, meh, I'll just let my daughter rule. Which, at least half of Westeros is going to think is a very, very bad idea. To give a woman, woman power is like to give a gun to a monkey. Let's face it, nobody wants a Magor with tits. But jokes aside, I don't mind this prophecy thing. Personally, I would not have done it this way. And just as Danis foresaw the end of Valyria, Aegon foresaw the end of the world of men. It is to begin with a terrible winter, gusting out of the distant north. Aegon called his dream the Song of Ice and Fire. If I was going to let the Targaryens know about the giant ice zombie problem, then I'd have had Torrent Stark and say, hey dude, we've got a fucking problem, winter is coming. And that's how the Targaryens ended up knowing about the White Walkers. At least that's how I'd have done it. The last king in the north, Torrin Stark, the king who knelt, did so to save his people, and after bending the knee, tells Aegon Targaryen that winter is coming. That's my headcanon for this. Torrin Stark told Aegon Targaryen when he bent the knee, and then Aegon was a cunt and took credit for all of it. Because he was a cunt. There's no cure for being a cunt. Which leads me to one of my last, but certainly not my least, piece of praise. The dragons who at George's own direction and keeping true to the books look distinctly different from each other. They have their own character, their own behavior, their own personality. Caraxes fits the bill perfectly. Red, huge, and lean. He was called the Bloodworm, and from the looks of him in this, for good reason. I absolutely adore the direction they've taken with the dragons. I cannot wait to see dragons like Sunfire with his golden scales. Tessarion, the Blue Queen, Vermifor, Vagar, to name only a few, I sincerely hope that Caraxes is just the tip of the iceberg and that the rest of the dragon designs are going to be equally as interesting and true to the books. Because that's the true hype for this show. The Dance of Dragons has so many incredibly cool moments, like the Battle Above the God's Eye, the Winter Wolves, Kriegen Stark. I'm hoping we get to see the battle above Storm's End and the love affair in Winterfell, with a certain dragon rider and the Lady Snow, not to mention the dragon seeds. And I hope to hell we get to see a glimpse of the cannibal, who's probably the closest thing to a living Beleria on the Black Dread that we'll ever get. There is simply too much cool shit to list in the Dance of Dragons. So I really hope they don't fuck this up. I pray to the old gods of the bloody new that the writers do not get bored and or offered a Star Wars deal and then they just throw the quality down a goddamn toilet by writing their own stupid fan fiction nonsense. We already have Amazon and Jeff Bezos stomping on our fucking dreams. We do not need you doing it too, HBO. I'm giving you the benefit of the doubt here. This episode was good. It's looking good. I have nothing actually legitimate to complain about. Other than the fact that Dark Sister and Blackfire, the Valerian steel swords of House Targaryen, look kind of... Meh? Where's the rubies and the dragon heads, pommels and shit? Like, meh. But other than the swords and the tree, I have nothing bad to say. The episode was good. I just hope the rest of the season is equally good. Stick to the source material. Or, when the sun sets, your line, HBO, will end. <laughs>